Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Galaxy. Hopefully, I am doing good. So today in this video, I am going to share an interview. This is of three years of experience person. Okay, so this is Salesforce developer interview. And uh, would like to say one thing. So if you are having a good experience like 2.5 or more than three years of experience, then it is good to have a LWC knowledge. Okay, because as uh, two three years have already gone that the as when the LWC was introduced and if still you are lacking in the basics of LWC then this is not a good point for you also okay as nowadays the most uh, frequently asked topic is the LWC only in the interviews uh, from the developer perspective okay so it is better to have a LWC knowledge okay and in this video also discuss about the chat boot so if you want to know about the chat boot what is chat boot in service cloud how we can implement this and how we can make our agent and the customer uh, support live so you can watch out the playlist uh, which I have already shared on the service cloud so in this I have sh uh, shared like how we can implement this chat boot okay and the omni channel and the live agent so uh, let's start with video and if you have any question uh, or any doubt regarding any question do let me know in the comment section so let's start with the video and uh, I have worked on sales cloud service cloud and a little bit like exploring the experience cloud as well and, and uh, also i have implemented one chatbot so that we can support our customer and can give a feel of a live agent support like they can ask their questions they can raise a case as well from there and if they are they have some issues while raising like uh, we have made some website and all so if there you need some help in like uh, in our chatbot we are, we are using two things that is the sales support and the service support sales support for that like if you are purchasing some order or something you are not able to purchase it having some payment issue or other thing then you can avoid it uh, you can just click on it we need sales agent support then the request will be sent to it and also here I am using a you can say as a um, skill based routing so that like if they can select as the option as a payment issue then that request will be sent to the agent who is working on that payment skills and same with the delivery and same with the service as well so that is whole what i have done okay nice so in this your chat but you are also using this omni channels like mm, yes omni channel and the omni supervisor for assigning the supervisors okay so let's suppose there is a customer and he needs the uh, support okay. okay so he raised the case from the uh, so from the support which you are showing there outside on okay. the website okay so now and your user like the live agent is on offline or is not available for few days so how you will going to notify this customer or it uh -huh. all this case will be going to ship to someone else what yeah so here i have used a chat transfer option there mm -hmm. like uh, there are two or uh, two agents like one is working on payment and second is working on delivery and by the case the user has raised a case that is related to the payment and that agent is offline or like on leave or something else then automatically we have used a chat transfer option like uh, we are using it one is the manually like uh, if I'm working on some race and I am looking like user is asking for the payment, but by but uh, in real it's a case of a delivery. So I can transfer my check to the delivery agent as well. Or the second, we have written some automations. Like if there is only one uh, agent to support, automatically that uh, request will be sent to the available agent. Okay. So in your automation, how you will get to know whether the agent is available or not? Um, agent is available or not? Like um. Because basically, if I'm saying like this is what I am just thinking, like we can do in this way, mm -hmm. but we are not like what the implementation I have done, I have not considered this case. Okay. Like, uh, uh, because in my case, it is like if you are, if one agent is working on the request and he is not able to solve the issue, they can manually transfer the chat. Okay. Automation, I am just thinking like in this way, we can do it, but I have not done the implementation okay. once yet. Yeah. Manually, so, you are uh, doing this transfer. Yeah. Okay. For now, we are doing manually. Okay. What if, uh, if we, you do this automatically, like if you get to know whether oh, the agent oh. is available or not? So, would it be oh, a great okay. idea or not? Um. Yeah. The logic we need to think. Uh, because there first, is no yeah, first of all, the thing is here how we get to know whether the agent is available, whether he yes. is offline or not yes. online. Um, 
Yes, because if because there is no such object to track the record of the agent, like account and contact, we know that if this field is required or what is the status of this field. So, like in this case, there is nothing like that. We can track the um like we can track the status of uh, agent. So, automation. If we want to do um, then in this case, what I say, like what we uh, like in um, like the automation, we can do one thing. Um, so basically, because maybe sometimes it happens because what I because what I realize in my terms, because in my thing, uh, I have made three agents. Like one is working on payment, second is working on delivery, and third is working on other options. So in my case, what I feel like if one agent is offline, then automatically the request is transferred to the second agent mm -hmm. who is available. Okay, okay, no problem. Because I have not implemented the automation, yeah. but automatically omnichannel has this feasibility. Like it will be the it is transferred to the available agent. Okay, okay. Okay, let's suppose the customer raised the case, okay, okay. and your agent has not replied and it is being raised uh, two hours ago and still okay. the agent is not replied to over the case. So, how we can uh, notify them or how we can make agent active so they can respond to the customer as soon as possible? Uh, in this case, like for if you want to inform the customer first thing, but to inform the um inform the customer we can use a case escalation rule mm -hmm. like if it uh, um, but it's for the customer like if the request has raised before two hours like 1 pm and it's 3 pm so automatically if the time span is greater than two hours then we can use the case escalation rule here like your request has been escalated to this agent or something and for the customer um I think for the customer, we can do the same thing. Like uh, we can create first escalation rule. Like, um, but I don't think so. It will work for the customer. Uh, exactly. Don't know like what yeah, we no can problem. do. Yeah, no problem. So yeah. here main thing is to notify the agent only. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Agents. That's I know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can you tell me few points why we should prefer LWC over Aura? Um. Or uh, why we should prefer LWC, right? Yeah. Uh, like as uh, I told you, like I have never worked on Aura, so I don't know too much okay, about so it. Anything, Aura. Okay, tell me about anything. Uh, this uh, LWC framework. Uh, yeah, LWC. Like uh, in this, like first the first the three decorators we use in the LWC. Mm -hmm. One is the API and one is the wire method and third is the track method. Mm -hmm. And all have their own property. If we want to use the uh, methods and the logic, like whenever we, whenever the component is load, then automatically the data of UI would be updated. And if we want to use that component only inside that component of the LWC, then here we can use the track method. API method we generally use to call the we just may use to uh, means to make the all the properties to be public like if we are making um like two three components and one uh, like and i want to call that co component in all the components like you can say as a parent component and child component and then in that case api will help us because api will make the things to be available publicly like you can call the another component as well through the api Wire method we generally use to call the Apex method inside LWC. And one main thing which I know about the Aura and LWC is that uh, like we can use LWC anywhere. Okay, like if you want to design a custom page, custom table, re-render or not re-render, like LWC component, like form you can say, or table, anything you want to design, you can do with the LWC. But LWC does not support that re-render property. Like I told you, like on the account, I want to re-render, like override the property of account new button. Like when I click on account, then that LWC will be open. Then in that case, Aura will come in picture, like through the Aura, we can re-render the property of that new button. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do we pass the data from child to parent and parent to child in LWC? Um, parent to child and child to parent. The one thing is like um, I have made one component. Okay. 
and one one method is like um, under this i have made one child one component that is abc you can say as a parent component and the child component can be xyz and if i want to call it child component under that abc component then one method is that like when we are calling that html we are writing it over there i can use the template that is in the um in the braces um mm -hmm. like you can so open and call open brackets that is the braces will be like you no know, like uh, greater than less okay than okay got it yeah. okay yeah i forget it yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. here i can also use that is the c hyphen mm -hmm. and the child component name as well one method is this mm -hmm. and second we can call them as um second method there is one more method to call the child component um one is yeah it's escaping but there are two methods to call okay next parent to child ah uh, in the parent to child is um parent to child um one parent component and one child parent to child okay when we use custom events in lwc custom events yeah uh, so custom events we can use um like uh, um, custom events in lwc when we can no one i have not work on custom events where we create event and then when and then we dispatch this event to transfer the data oh no no idea i have okay so how do we call uh, apex methods in lwc uh, so in that one uh, like i am calling it through the wire method and second we have also used the connected callback so in one method um like um, so this what i have done it so i am doing it with the connected callback under that connected callback i have called that method which i have made in the apex class and then i am using that uh, dot then under the braces that is the result and then passing the id and like um, this dot contact and error and giving the message that it is undefined or it's an error then in the catch i am giving that error and all okay so what is the difference between calling method under connected callback and calling it with wire with the wire um i do not feel any difference between them using there is no there may be a difference but uh, mm -hmm. i first simultaneously i have used the both methods first i am doing it with the wire method it give me the same result and second time when i am using the content connected call back again it give me the same results okay okay let's suppose you have wire method okay okay which you are calling your apex method okay and in yes. the connected call back also you are calling your apex method okay, okay. so now what you will see uh, how uh, so the wire is uh, called first okay and okay. then connected call back method is written okay so okay. what do you think in which method you will going to get the values from apex controller first apex controller first i think uh, i will get the value in connected call back first why why because uh, okay no problem okay can you tell me the life cycle hook in lwc um okay in the lwc first that component will be create then after that component it uh, uh, it will goes to the connected callback and in the connected callback whatever the data it has it will be passed to that uh, another component after that it will perform the cycle then disconnected callback will be called and after disconnected um, it will finish it uh, like this it will work okay okay let's move to apex now so tell me best practices of triggers to write a trigger yeah so first best practice is like um, whenever it's needed try to write a one trigger on a particular object and also use also written the code in a bulky file code and never and try to avoid using uh, calling the sql methods or dml operations under the for loop 
because it will increase our cover limit, governor limit. So we have to take care of that cover limits when we are writing the code. Also use the context handler, uh, context handler like you can say as a, uh, after insert, before insert. So use that logic methods and also try to um, also try to use like uh, there is one case um, like whenever you are inserting a data and after that you want to show some error like uh, when you have written a trigger so just try to make use so that you can reduce the dml operations so because there is some cases where we can use before insert operations and the after insert operation as well but if needed like you can try to use a before insert if they both are working in the same because in the before insert we can reduce one dml operation and also the code can be bulkify and one trigger should be written on one object and also try to avoid calling the batches inside the triggers because there are some limitations like we can call five batches so try to avoid calling batches from triggers as well and um, Okay, so here you said first find uh, we should create one trigger per object. Okay, this comes yes. under best practices. Okay, so what is the reason behind this? Why should we create one trigger per object? Okay, now um, let's suppose uh, I have created two object, two triggers. Mm -hmm. Then one is on account. That when the account email is updated, then the contact email is updated. And second email, second object, I am again also writing on account that whenever um, um, like you can say like when the account amount or something is greater than this or not then they can pop up an error so at that time they can be confused like uh, maybe because it do not understand that first operation what they have to do first like it will check that whenever the account email is changing it will update the contact email or first it will check the value of that amount it is greater than of, of whatever the condition I have used so because they will not understand that which performance which operation they have to perform first that's just to uh, just to avoid that uh, like first operation because they do not choose well like which operation they have to perform first just because of that we have to use one triggers but yes we can write multiple triggers as well okay we right. can also write multiple uh, multiple like uh, no no we can I am not saying that multiple but sometimes we are writing the triggers like one for the yeah. account updating this value and something okay. just try to avoid if it's not necessary okay. try to use the concept in the one okay so can we create master detail relationship on existing records master detail relationship on existing record mm -hmm. no we can't so if we want to do so how we can achieve this if we want to achieve if you want to do this uh, if you want to do this because um, first either you have to remove all that records that is existing to that object to whom you want to make it as master detail after that you can make it you go if the record is already existing and you will try to it it will not allow you to make it as and all the records which is created you can lost it as well so first I think you have to remove that records and then can make your master detail. Removing the records, I don't think this is the good idea. Ah yeah, removing the code is not a good idea. Or um, also how you can do like or uh, one but thing what if we create a lookup relationship and add all masters there and then convert this lookup to master um yeah this we can also make like first we can um, create one lookup object on that object we want to create and after that we can convert in the master detail here okay so let's yeah, suppose okay uh on our object we have two masters okay so okay. a and b are the master and c is the object child okay what if any okay. one of the master is deleted so will the child also get deleted in this case if i delete any one of the master um, i don't think so that one child component can have two masters 
no 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 not component it's a object okay and yeah. like suppose so there is a uh, two masters like suppose account and contact are the two master and opportunity are is child of both the account and contact okay so in and this case okay. if i delete uh, contact record so will it also going to delete the opportunity record as it is uh, this is the child of contact Mm, no i don't think so it will be deleted because it has at least one because it also has one parent component so i don't think so it will be deleted okay okay because it is associated to account as well so okay it don't delete have you worked on dynamic apex also um, no no okay Okay, in asynchronous Apex, what are mixed DMLs? Okay, so mixed DML, uh, mixed DML is like uh, mixed DML errors when we are perform when we are trying to perform a DML operation on the setup object and the non setup object. So setup objects you can say as uh, um, like. you know, users and the non setups you are say account and contact and this when you are trying to do a multi like uh, dml operations on both non setup and the setup object then it will pop up an error that errors we can call it as dml operations and to avoid the dml errors we use the future methods as future methods can use to uh, to avoid the dml errors or to like it will not try, it try to do not happens the dml error. Okay. What is the difference between future methods and queuable class? Okay. So if we know like future methods, we cannot call from batch and the queuable, but the queuable methods we can call from the from the um, like you can say as a queuable and batches and the future method as well. And also in the queuable we can schedule a job, but in the future method we cannot schedule any jobs. And uh, also. um or main criteria like um, uh, future methods we generally used to call when we have to make a web call out and then we can use the future methods and the queuable method when we want to call the multiple objects or something and also like when we want like um, like there is no limitations of the chaining like you can move only two record three and four so also we can use the queuable methods here and also different some um, i know the two three okay. okay what are static and dynamic dashboards static and dynamic okay so a static dashboard is like i am making one report okay and and um, because that because the dashboard can be made only through the like the, when we are combining the reports like we can maximum use the 20 reports and and it can represent the data of the reports in the form of of like displaying data so this is a dashboard but it is a static dashboard like it is making the it is displaying the data on the basis of the report which i have in my system and the dynamic dashboards are you can say like as a covid examples and it shows you the live like these all are the cases are increasing like within one minute and this means on the real time data the data will be displaying in this this and curve form so this is the dynamic dashboard but the salesforce does not support dynamic dashboards okay